A mortgage is the biggest debt most of us will ever have. And because the numbers are so big, thousands of dollars can slip away without a borrower even noticing. Here are six money draining cracks that home buyers really need to think about. Hey, welcome back everyone. And if you're new to my channel, I'm Veronica Edwards, full-time local real estate agent located right here in Central Florida. And here are six money draining cracks you should think about before buying your first or next home. The first one is ignoring the true cost of home ownership. Owning a home can come with many surprises, either to a new home buyer or an experienced homeowner. Even experienced homeowners oftentimes forget how much it costs to fix hidden problems, update a home, outdated features. It's wise to take these costs into consideration before signing on the dotted line. Before purchasing a home, calculate how much the costs are going to be to make the home up to your standard of living. In some cases, it may be cheaper to buy the more expensive home than the fixer-upper and put in all the additional costs to bring it up. On the other hand, if you're struggling to come up with the down payment, it may be wise to buy the cheaper home and fix it up using a lot of your sweat equity to bring it up to your standards. A 20% down payment on a $300,000 home is $60,000. If you can't afford that, consider possibly a nearby fixer-upper for $225,000 and then your down payment is $45,000. That $15,000 may be enough to make a big difference where you can start working on the home over time, use your sweat equity, and bring it up to the standard living that you're accustomed to. The longer you own a home, the more you're going to want to or need to put into it. Eventually you're going to have to replace the roof, upgrade the water heater, put in a new back fence, crack driveway. There's often several unexpected surprises that come along with owning a home throughout the years. As a general rule of thumb, you should expect 1-2% to 2 as a general rule to upkeep on the maintenance of your home. So if your home will cost $250,000, plan on spending about $25,000 to $5,000 a year on unglamorous purchases such as a water heater or maintaining the furnace. The older the home and the larger it is, the more you'll end up spending. Also consider having a savings fund for your bigger ticket items like if your roof has a five year life expectancy, start putting a little away every year so you're prepared when the roof does need replaced as that is one of the bigger ticket items in owning a home. Number two, becoming house poor. Now look, there are many places you would rather put your money such as maybe replacing a worn out car, saving for your kids college fund, life altering vacation even buying new furniture for your home. But if you're spending too much on your mortgage, you won't have any money for these other investments. As a general rule of thumb for housing affordability is not to spend more than 20% of your annual income. If you earn $75,000 a year, your mortgage should not be more than $17.50 a month, including your insurance and your HOA fee as well. Number three, not shopping around for mortgage loans. Now it might say on the surface, all mortgage lenders are the same and maybe the lender you're speaking with is offering you the one and only option you have. And that's simply not true. There are many options out there to fit your particular needs. For example, if you qualify for a military loan, you can possibly buy a home with 0% down. There's also loans for school teachers and other job types. There's even loans for particular areas you can live in. Now, if you found yourself a great realtor, that realtor should be already working with some top-notch lenders that are able to help you find the best mortgage loan program there is out there to fit your specific needs. My personally, here in Central Florida, I have partnered with some amazing lenders and they will help you get the best deal for your current situation and whatever you're looking for. You can also compare loans by personally calling different loan brokers and finding out what fits your needs specifically. Number four, ignoring the APR. Some lenders advertise low interest rates with high upfront fees. If you were to spread these costs out over the life of the loan, you may end up realizing that you may have gotten a better deal with a different loan. Sometimes a lower interest rate has a higher APR. 
APR means average percentage rate. For instance, imagine you have a $100,000 loan with the 30 year fixed rate with an interest rate of 3.85%. Now imagine the lender charges two points, a 1% origination fee, and 1,500 in other closing costs. That brings the real interest rate from 3.85% to 4.215% APR. Next, imagine a $100,000 loan at 4.05%, but with no points, a 1% origination fee, and just 800 in other closing costs. That loan's real rate is 4.199% APR. The first loan may look cheaper on the surface, but it's actually more expensive. Number five, making a small down payment. Many loans require a 20% down payment, and if you're not able to come up with the 20% and you put less down, you may be looking at mortgage insurance premium, depending on the type of loan. And that extra insurance premium every month can cost you an additional up to sometimes $100 or more. Now, if you can't afford the 20%, consider a few things. Maybe waiting till you do have the money saved up before you buy your home. Or consider buying a cheaper home where you do have the 20% to save the mortgage insurance premium. Or if you buy now and you don't have the 20% down but you plan on doing a lot of renovations, maybe perhaps have your home evaluated another year or two and see if it will now. If you do have enough in it, then your mortgage insurance premium can be removed that way as well. Number six, not checking and fixing your credit report. Checking your credit report should be part of your annual credit checkup anyways, but checking when you're about to ready to apply for a mortgage is even more important. Why? Because credit rating equals interest rate. A low or poor credit rating can cause you higher interest rate, while a great good credit score can get you a much better interest rate what can save you tons of money over the life of your loan. Always keep an eye on your credit usage. A high credit usage will get lenders to be concerned if you're overusing your credit where a lower one will show that you're being more responsible and you're not going to overspend yourself. Keeping some credit also keeps credit worthiness and which is way better than no credit at all. Contact me for smart home buyer representation before you start searching for your home here in Central Florida. Until next time.